Hello, my name is Dr. Yaya Sisoko. Today we are going to talk about Chapter 18, Equilibrium in Labor Market. When can we say that the labor market is in equilibrium? A market is in equilibrium whenever supply equal to demand. In the case of labor, supply of labor equal to labor demand. So, so wages in competitive market have to adjust you know, to balance the supply and demand for labor. So the labor market will be in equilibrium whenever wages equal to the value of marginal product of labor. So in which case, uh, the, uh, so the excess uh, supply of labor and the excess demand of labor will be zero. So changing in supply or demand of labor will also change the equilibrium wage it will also change the value of marginal product by the same amount. Figure number four display the equilibrium in the labor market. So we can see that uh, we lot with wage on the vertical axis or y axis and quantity of labor on the horizontal axis or x axis. The supply curve of labor and the demand curve of labor cross at the equilibrium point right here where you can find the equilibrium wage and the equilibrium quantity of employment. So like all prices, the price of labor, which is the wage here, depends on supply and demand. You know, we can see that at higher wages here, so more and more people want to work the supply curve is positively slow at other wages business is cost businesses to you know to more to hire the worker so the therefore at higher wages the, the cost of production increases business profit will decrease so they they will hire less worker so the demand curve of of uh, labor is downward slope or negatively slope. So in equilibrium, so worker receive exactly the value of the marginal product to contribution to the production of goods and services, and that's what you see right there. So what will happen to the equilibrium wage, equilibrium quantity, you know, so in the labor market, whenever there is an increase in in the supply. Well, if there is an increase in supply, for instance, uh, you know, so more women entering the labor force, so, you know, than 50 years ago, so, or, or migration of uh, more people to the US, uh, you know, so the labor supply will increase and shift it away. This will decrease, uh, you know, the wage. So this will lower marginal product of labor. This will also lower the value of the marginal product of labor. So this will lead to higher employment. Figure five display a shift in labor supply. Before the shift, the labor supply is in market at uh, S. Uh, so where supply curve S1 cross or the demand curve at this point, you have the equilibrium wage, which is W1, and the equilibrium quantity of labor, which is L1. So an increase in the labor supply due to, for instance, a change in the taste where more women enter the supply curve than, you know, so than they used to before, or there is a migration of new worker, for example, from Mexico to the US. So the labor supply curve will shift to the right, a positive shift, so to S2, where the new supply curve cross the demand curve at this point, at this point you have a, this will lower the wage rate to W2, wage rate, will reduce the wage rate, W2, and then uh, this will increase uh, employment from L1 to L2. You have higher uh, employment.
So, so you can see that um, the change in the wage reflected the change in the value of the marginal product of labor with more worker and the output added from a natural worker is smaller. So what will happen to the equilibrium in the labor market when there is an increase in the demand? Uh, increase in the demand, for instance, if you have new and better technology, technological advances, which will, you know, so, you know, so increase the productivity of worker and businesses will hire more workers. So, you know, so labor demand will increase and shift to the right. This will lead to higher wages. And so there is no change in the marginal product of labor, you know, this will lead to higher value of marginal product of labor, and then also this will increase employment. So figure number six, you know, show a shift in labor demand. So, given the labor market, you know, initially the labor market is in equilibrium where the supply of labor cross uh, the demand, the one of uh, labor at this point, so which is the equilibrium point, and then uh, this leads to equilibrium wages, and then uh, and the equilibrium uh, W1 and equilibrium quantity of labor L1. So an increase in labor demand perhaps due to increase in the price of uh, you know so in price of output that the firm receive uh, in, in the market, uh, competitive market, or perhaps due to it, uh, technological innovation, new and better technology, labor demand will so the productivity level will increase businesses will hire more workers so labor demand will increase and shift to the right positive shift so to B2 so where the new demand can cross the supply curve at this point so uh, which is correspond to W2 higher wages so increase in the wages and then also correspond at an employment level of L2 which is also increasing employment in that sense from L1 to L2. You can see that, um, so, so changing in the wages reflect a change in the value of the marginal product of labor. So with the higher output price, so the output added from an extra worker is more valuable. So let me ask you the following question. What is the relationship between productivity you know, of worker and the wage paid to the workers? So in society, our standard of living, our well-being, the quality of our life depend on our ability to produce goods and services. So usually the wage paid to worker equal exactly to their productivity, meaning the higher wages, you know, uh, higher productivity, you get paid more. Lower productivity, you get paid less. So therefore, wages are measured by the value of the marginal product of of labor. So, so highly productive worker get paid more. So less productive worker gets get, get paid less. So here there is a, a positive relationship between wages and productivity. So. So, which means that uh, you're more productive, you get paid more, less productive, you get paid less. So how about if you compare the productivity of worker today to the productivity of worker 50 years ago? So, workers today are more productive, they are better off than workers you know, since previous generation in the U.S. Uh, because the productivity, you know, so, you know, so they were more productive and they, there was a real wage growth uh, from 1959 to 2012. So productivity measured 
output per hour. So worker grew by about 2.1 percent per year. And real wages, uh, wage adjustment for inflation grow about 1.8 percent per year. So you can see that the productivity and real wage double in the U.S. every 25 years because of uh, you know so you know, higher productivity of worker. So wages also real wages for worker goes up. Uh, wages adjusted by inflation with real wages also increases. So comparing the uh, breaking down the period into two sub period and comparing productivity to real wage growth, uh, we can see that uh, from the period, you know, 1973, 1995, there was a significant slowdown in productivity. Productivity went down from 2.8% to 1.4 percent you know so this you know decrease in the productivity also show a decrease in the real wage growth from 2.8 percent to 1.2 percent however during the period 1995 to 2012 productivity growth so by 2.8 percent per, per year you know so real wage growth by 1.9 percent per, per year so which is higher than the one of the previous previous year it's able to summarize uh, the productivity and wage growth in the u.s uh, we divide in the period into four you know so uh, different period we see that uh, the growth in productivity is measured as its analyzed rate change in output as an analyzed rate change in output per hour for in the non-farm business sector growth in the other age on the other end is measured as the analyzed change in compensation per hour for the non-farm business section divided by the implicit cost deflated for that for that sector so we we can see that uh, the, the the productivity data measure average productivity which is the quantity of output divide, divided by the quantity of labor rather than the marginal productivity but average and marginal productivity are, are close to more closely together we can see that from the period 1959 to 2012 productivity in also and and uh, productivity in, in as well 2.1 percent and then real wage was 1.8 percent during the next period 59 1959 to 1973 so so productivity went up productivity went up to to 3.8 percent and then also real wage also went out to 2.8 percent you know However, for the following period, 1975-1995, productivity dropped to 1.4 percent, and then also real wage dropped to 1.1 percent. And then for the last period, 1995-2012, so productivity increased to 2.3 percent, and real wage increased to 1.9 percent. We can see that uh, change in productivity and change in real wage are correlated they are positively correlated and increase in productivity will lead to increase in real wage decrease in productivity will lead to decrease in real wage